Hi, everybody. Deb Calvert, back with another mini lesson from the book, Stop Selling and Start Leading. This one's an important one because I want to address a common misunderstanding. Let me back up to tell you how I came to this conclusion. For the book, Stop Selling and Start Leading, we conducted research with 530 B2B buyers. This was a Qualtrics panel study through Santa Clara University, and these were verified B2B buyers. The work they do is primarily in purchasing, but all other sorts of, of demographic variables were factored in across industries, company sizes, complexity of decisions, and so on. We asked buyers about seller behaviors and about what sort of behaviors they wanted to see from the sellers they choose to do business with. We asked them what would cause them to be more likely to meet with a seller and what would be more likely to cause them to buy from a seller. And from that, we were able to get the behavioral blueprint for selling. We also conducted research with sellers. We asked them to tell us about their own personal best in selling, J just the story. What were you doing when you were at your own personal best? And then we compared the story side by side to see if the same behavior showed up in what sellers said they were doing and what buyers said they wanted sellers to be doing. Really interesting stuff. One of the big surprises that came out of this study is this disconnect. Sellers, in fact, over 75% of the stories we gathered had sellers attributing their success to one thing, persistence. See, we saw the leadership behaviors that buyers desired inside those seller stories, but sellers didn't make the connection. They didn't say, I was successful. I made this extraordinary sale because of my leadership behavior. Instead, they think they're making the sale purely because of their persistence. Well, in all the comments we gathered from all those buyers, the word persistence showed up zero times. Not one single buyer attributed a seller's success, nor their own interest, to persistence. Now, I am not meaning to discount the importance of being persistent, getting back in there over and over again. It does take that sometimes to stay top of mind. But persistence alone, just hammering the buyer, relentlessly pursuing the buyer, doing those behaviors that buyers actually dislike, like um, calling or emailing to say, hey, just checking in, that's not what gets the job done. So I'd like to reframe this. It's not pure persistence, it's perseverance. And there is a difference. Let me, let me just read to you a little bit from Stop Selling and Start Leading where we explain the difference. You see, to persist means to continue steadfastly, just to continue doing anything steadfastly. But to persevere means to purposefully pursue an outcome even in the face of hardship or obstacles. And that's an important difference. It's what you're doing while you persevere through those hardships and obstacles, like buyer continuances and delays. What you do matters a great deal more than simply doing something, something meaningless, irrelevant, that actually devalues you. So instead of persisting, which probably makes you feel pushy. Think instead about persevering the worthy outcome of really helping your buyer achieve what it is they set out to achieve. Leaders persevere. And if you're to show up as a leader instead of just another seller, you need to change your persisting. Thank you for watching this video from People First Productivity Solutions. I'm Deb Calvert, and I really appreciate it when you give us a thumbs up or a share or comment on these videos. While you're here, go ahead and subscribe. We don't want you to miss out on any of the new content or tools.